Welcome back, Stoss23 here, back again with some knife therapy, and today I have seven good budget big pocket knives for you. These are knives that deserved uh, some video time, and I haven't been able to get around to them. But first up, we have coming from Olight. This is the Olight Zilla. I think the name says it all. You have a massive chunk of C, I mean, of 154 CM steel. Excellent, excellent choice there. Um, nice and slicey because you have this big old high flat grind. Nice and comfortable in hand. G10 scales with a good bit of grip. Easy access to the lock bar. And that action is just, oh, riding on bearings. Nice free drop action. Snappy, snappy thud. And you can get this right now for $85 off of Amazon, or you could also get it off the Olight site as well. Deep carry pocket clip that is reversible. Uh, so they were thinking about lefties when they designed this knife. This is just a massive knife. And all these knives, in my, you know, this is just depending on your view of a big knife. For me, any, that's anything that's three and a half inches or over. Usually it's over, but, you know, that's about where I stand with that. So there you go. That's number one, the Olight Zilla. Number two, we have the Cold Steel SR1 Light. Now, <laughs> the light is comical because at first I thought they meant on the weight. This is a 6.9 ounce knife. However, they're referring more to the price being more affordable at $39 compared to its premium counterpart in S35VN and G10 for $130. And although this is in 8CR13 MOV, you have a massive, massive chunk of it. And uh, yeah, you can use and abuse this knife without feeling bad about it. And I promise you, even the HCR 13 MOV for how thick and wedgy this knife is, you are going to beat it and beat it until uh, uh, you either break the blade or the handle. The FRN scales aren't bad because they have the stippling effect on them. They are a little over aggressive, but they're not too bad to where I immediately felt like I'd put on gloves. You can choke up on it. The action uh, gets nice and smooth over time, and it's got one massive, massive triad lock right there. And if you don't know, the triad lock is arguably one of the strongest locks on the market. Um, it is uh, tip up left or right hand carry. I'm not a huge fan of the pocket clip because it's sitting on this rough uh, surface and it's a very, very tight clip. Now you could do something to it uh, to break it in or you could try to get an aftermarket one. The action on this thing is very, very smooth. Just a fun knife to play around with or to thrash on stuff. They bring it on the, in the campground with you uh, to pry stuff if you needed to. I don't know. Cool, nonetheless, at uh, $39, I think it's a, a, a good little buy here. Number three, we have the Shielded Knives Boa. This is a rather interesting looking knife. Uh, it's almost a four inch blade right under it. Uh, D2 steel, and I don't know what you want to call that, a modified Tonto or a modified uh, reverse Tonto, I don't know. It's got a titanium coating on there to protect the D2. Uh, you have a decent, decently slicey blade. This is going to be excellent for utility cuts because you have this one edge right here, and then you have a second edge right here. So it's pretty easy to uh, get that flat portion straight down doing those type of cuts, or if you are doing, you know, more of your cardboard cutting in this fashion uh, would work fine as well. You have multiple deployment methods, very, very smooth action, very comfortable in hand because of the contoured G10 scales that are multi-colored, multi-layered uh, G10. It is a funky looking knife, but I will say it's grown on me. The action's very snappy on bearings. Um, tip up pocket clip. It is right hand tip up only, however, um, you can use it left-handed fairly easily. You just have to carry it in your right pocket. That is the Shielded Knives Boa, and you can pick this up right now on Amazon for, I think it's, uh, 49, yeah, 49 bucks. Very, very nice action, ergos, and excellent, excellent utility knife there. Number four is the Miguron Knives Valona. 
This thing has a nice 3.75 inch uh, blade with a beautiful, beautiful crown spine up there. Something you usually don't see in your more budget friendly knives. Uh, decent slicer, very, very nice action. And you have multiple opening methods with that nice long fuller. You can reverse flick it if you want. You can slow roll it if you want, or you can just flip it out with the traditional flipper there. Very, very nice action on bearings. Uh, G10 scales, polished stainless steel liners, mill titanium pocket clip, and you can get this for around 53 bucks. And this one's in there DC35 or whatever the steel was, kind of like it's kind of like a D2. But now you can get this uh, on Amazon right now. Amazon Prime for 53 bucks with 14C28N. That makes me really, really excited. Uh, cool knife, especially now that they offer it in a stainless steel option and a really, really good budget stainless steel as well. Very, very nice. The Migron Valona, very, very cool knife. Number five, we have the Off-Grid Knives Rhino V2. Now this isn't a very large knife. It's a, it's a three and five eighths inch blade, but this thing is super, super stout. It just feels like it can take just about anything. And uh, it's in 154 CM steel. I'm pretty sure that the OEM is best tech and they do some excellent work. Um, it's a good performer while also being a nice and rigid folder. Like I said, you just have to have it in hand to know what I mean. Um, the action on this thing is it, it comes out with a thud. Just watch. Comes out super hard, well tuned detent, and a very comfortable flipper tab being that it's rounded over and it has jimping to catch that finger and uh, while remaining comfortable. Uh, very good ergonomics, fills out the hand nicely. Uh, this nice curve, subtle curve right there feels good. You have some milling on that G10, I think it looks nice. And you have a deep carry reversible pocket clip. Very nice to see that. Uh, the off-grid knives Rhino V2. I have thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed this one and I, I just never got around to being able to do a full review on it Definitely deserves uh, its time on the channel. You can pick this up right now on Amazon for $97 It's a little it's probably the the most expensive knife on this list, but if you if you uh, Look around and sometimes you go on their site and you can get them for a little cheaper sometimes as well a uh, very small batch company. That's why the prices are, you know, a little bit higher than others. But I've, I've reviewed and tested a bunch of their knives and they've all blown me away. Number six, we have the Kaiser XL Bag Ladder. This is a White Mountain Knives exclusive. And uh, unfortunately, they're out of stock at the moment. But I think he has, if you go on his exclusives uh, section in on his uh, page, it gives you a time frame of when these are coming back. And I'm pretty sure he's doing multiple variations of it next time. I think it's uh, next one's a red micarta and a marble carbon fiber. So definitely stay tuned. And I think right here is an excellent, excellent bargain. You have a nice massive four inch blade that I think looks rather attractive with that stone wash and that nice little top swedge. Uh, good jimping, nice and fine jimping if you like jimping. Uh, blade steel on it. Once again, one of my favorite budget blade steels is 154 CM. It's nice and slicey. You have dual deployments with those thumb studs and that flipper tap. In both ways, the knife comes rocketing out on belt ball bearing, cage ball bearings, uh, ceramic and a ceramic. Uh, I was about to say detent, but just the ceramic uh, ball bearings. And some really, really nice shadow boxed uh, micarta left with that rougher texture so you get really nice traction on it. Tip up, deep carry, uh, pocket clip left or right handed. Uh, and these bad boys go for, I think it's right yet, yeah, 90, 90 bucks. That is an awesome, awesome deal for such a big, massive knife. Four inches of blade. Full size handle. Now, one one negative, as you could probably hear, uh, it does have lock stick. It's not it's not like where it feels like I'm not gonna be able to break it, but that is you know uh, inherent problem with button locks. I every company that I've ever bought button locks from, 
every single one of them has had some issues with uh, lock stick. I mean, look at Protec. They make they, they've been making uh, button locks forever now, and both Malibus that I've had had uh, lock stick. One of them was so bad that I had to return it. So that's just an inherent issue with a button lock. As long as I can break it without it hurting my finger, I am perfectly fine with that. It gives me a little bit more uh, security knowing it's locked up. So that is the XL bag letter. And being this was not currently in stock, I'll just throw one in there uh, for an alternative. And that is the Ontario Rat Model 1. I've owned several of these and they just don't die. You can beat the snot out of these. They're fairly cheap. This is in D2. All State one's very cheap, uh, strong as well. It's just a good work knife. Uh, nice full size knife there. There you go. There's the size on them. Last up, number seven, we have the Cold Steel Large Voyager. Um, this is a slight upgrade in uh, steel compared to the uh, SR1 Lite. This is an 8CR, not really my favorite steel, but you know, like I said, the price and how much you're getting there, it's, it's fine. But this one, good weight on it because you have these uh, polymer scales right here, triad lock. Full flat ground, you can get in clip point, drop point, tanto. Nice and comfortable ergos, you can choke up on it if you want. These right here are in AUS 10A, made in Taiwan. They do a really good job with the heat treat on their knives. And I've owned many of Voyagers and um, I've, I've loved them all. Nice and smooth action, you can drop it down without chopping yourself. Reversible tip up pocket clip. Uh, I'm not a fan of their pocket clips. This one's extremely tight on that rough texture, so it could rip up the pants. Uh, you could either modify it or try to find a clip that fits it. You can get these, I think, for like 58 bucks or something like that. Excellent, excellent value in my opinion. The Voyager was probably... I got a medium Tanto Voyager a uh, long, long time ago, and that's probably the knife that got me started in the hobby. Uh, haven't really thought thought about it in detail, but I'm pretty sure that was one of the ones that got me started. Bought it at a local, at our mall. They had a knife shop for a whole, like, three weeks, and then it shut down, but I uh, got a medium Voyager, and I think that started the journey. So there you go. That's my seven uh, big budget pocket knives. I would love to hear some of your favorites. Um, like I said, these are just ones that deserve some airtime on the channel because they haven't had a dedicated review. And uh, like I said, I'd love to hear you, some of yours and what you think about these seven. Do you own any of them? If so, what do you think? All right, guys and girls, I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.